I've got a real simple fix for static on your digital press, so stick around and I'll show you what I did. Probably not as good as a, you know, over-the-counter purchased anti-static unit, but very inexpensive and simple. Two things I like. So I got the first thousand booklets done on here, um, and I gotta be honest, I did see a little bit of static on the finishing side, so my static tinsel here on the end wasn't ideal. So I want to permanently mount something in here so I can test the next thousand. So the paper's coming out between this black bar and this uh, silver bar here. And uh, it's going to come across and hit this metal plate and keep on going. I see that uh, there are some metal, I don't know what you would call those things, to try and ground this plate out. So I think I'm going to try and mount something to this bottom bar here. see how this works and I am concerned if I'm running lightweight text that uh, this will interfere with the paper travel so I'm trying to brush it down with my hand so it's kind of heading the right way but I mean luckily enough I'm running some uh, 80 pound cover right away so that uh, that'll certainly push through here Paper's feeding fine, and there is no static in there. So I'm thinking we're good to go now. But time will tell when this is done, and I go to cut and stitch them. We'll check out the static then. These are looking real good. Let me show you how I'm eliminating the static and the other ones. Just running them through the Morgana. This right here is an anti-static bar. So it just takes all the static off and then I collate them. So over the past couple years I've been replacing the fluorescent fixtures with LED. And uh, just a, a recommendation, uh, don't get the cheapest LEDs. I did that and, you know, some of them were starting to die. So I got some nicer ones, but get the ballast bypass ones. You know, it, it's a lot quicker if you just get the, the LEDs that you pull your fluorescent out and then put your LED up, but you don't bypass the ballast. And the ballast is a huge waste of energy. And it's also a weak point, so that when the ballast dies, you still have to buy another ballast. So, like here, I cut the ballast out, and I run 110 to each side of the light, and then we're done. It's all self-contained, the driver and LEDs in one tube. I would totally recommend the ballast bypass, FYI. Man, anybody notice that? There is so much more light here with those LEDs. I only needed half of them. I only put one in and there were two fluorescent tubes. I gotta replace the rest of them. Well, now I'm curious, now that uh, the simple static fix is working real good, right in here, you can actually see it up in there. All right, there she is. Now I wanna know what's in here. I bet it's something simple, just like that. So let's take a look. So this is kind of interesting. There's an all metal roller here, which I'm assuming 
aids in discharging the paper. And I don't know exactly what everything is here, but you know, there's wires to a sensor here, which I'm sure is whether or not that's closed. Then there's some wires down here to this box. And then there's a heavier gauge wire that comes up into the top of here. And then there's some wires that comes into here, which are fans. So I'm assuming that this unit really just cools the paper off with the fan bank up here. And then there's some sort of a anti-static device that is using this to discharge the paper. Um, so yeah, that's what uh, the inside looks like. I don't know if you can hear that. It's only nine o'clock, everything's running. Oh, and FYI, if you're curious, the ROI on some LED lights is about a year, depending on what you pay for the light and how much you pay for electricity. Uh, but I figured out um, it's about a year until you recoup the costs of the LEDs, and then every year after that, you're gonna save that much money. These new lights are bright. I think I'm gonna have to swap the rest of the shop over to them.